Hi, in this video we're looking at temperature. Uh, there are three different types of temperature scales, but I just want to start with what is temperature? Uh, temperature is defined as this, it's the average kinetic energy of the particles of a sample. Now you may remember from introductory physics uh, that the kinetic energy is calculated by taking half the mass and multiplying it by the square of the velocity. What? Uh, the velocity is like the speed, um, it's how much distance is covered per second. Uh, and then the mass, of course, is, is like weight. It's the amount of matter. So it's how much moving how quickly. That's what temperature is measuring. Um, now, it's very often measured in chemistry not using Fahrenheit. We're used to Fahrenheit just out about in the world here in the United States. Um, but in chemistry, temperature is most often measured in Kelvin or Celsius. Uh, Kelvin is kind of the best for chemistry, and there there's a reason for that, and I'll show you in this video. There are three common... Uh, scales of measuring temperature, Fahrenheit, Celsius, and Kelvin. Um, at this temperature here, water boiling, do you know what temperature in Fahrenheit water boils at? It's 212 degrees Fahrenheit. It's kind of a strange number. In Celsius, this is where the Celsius scale comes from, it was determined that we were going to set 100 degrees Celsius at the temperature at which water boils. For Kelvins, which is probably of these three the most foreign to you, Kelvin is 373. Now that's kind of a strange number as well. Um, but let's keep going. What if I lowered the temperature to the temperature at which water freezes? Now we probably know this, but water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. In Celsius, water freezes at zero degrees Celsius. So I just want to show you this. The uh, Celsius scale from zero to 100 comes from what water does when it changes phases from solid to liquid to gas. And so that's kind of the whole genesis of the Celsius scale. It's that zero being water freezing, 100 being water boiling, and then off of that, we can just you know kind of scale it up to, uh, to measure temperature for everything else. Room temperature in Celsius is about 25, 23, 25 degrees Celsius, somewhere in there. In Kelvin, the temperature at which water freezes is 273 Kelvin. Now I want to pause and point out one major, major thing here. If you look at the difference between the temperatures water boiling and water freezing for uh, Celsius, uh, what you'll notice is that's 100 degrees. It's the same gap in the two measurements for water boiling and water freezing in the Kelvin scale. So what this means is that um, a change in one degree Celsius a change in one degree, that delta means change, is equivalent to a change in one Kelvin. So they're not the same scale because otherwise they, these numbers would match, but their increments are identical. They have equivalent increments and that makes Celsius and Kelvin really easy to kind of play with each other. Now there is one more thing I wanna show you and that's this. Well, what if I have absolutely no molecular motion? The velocity of a particle of on average is zero. That means molecules have completely frozen. Um, that's something that's called absolute zero. And in Fahrenheit, that's this relatively arbitrary negative 460 degrees Fahrenheit number. In Celsius, it's negative 273. And maybe you can figure out what it would be in Kelvin. In Kelvin, it would be zero. And so this explains why Kelvin is a separate scale from Celsius. Celsius is based off of what, what water does when it changes phases. Kelvin is based off of the fact that at zero Kelvin, we have absolutely no uh, particle motion. Um, and now that's theoretical. We haven't gotten there, uh, thankfully, because we'd all probably be dead. Uh, but uh, that's what the Kelvin scale is based off of. What that also means is that it's impossible to have a negative Kelvin temperature. All Kelvin temperature measurements are positive. Um, one other thing to mention about this is because uh, Fahrenheit just really doesn't have a very solid reason for having this scale. In uh, chemistry, we tend to ignore Fahrenheit completely. Now, of course, it may be interesting to you to convert Fahrenheit degrees to Celsius or Celsius to Fahrenheit, just so you have an idea of what a, a certain Celsius measurement is uh, based on what you're used to. Um, but in chemistry, we will not use Fahrenheit. And for that reason, in this video, we are not at all gonna talk about how to get between Fahrenheit and Celsius. Um, or Kelvin for that matter. I just want to show you how to convert between Celsius and Kelvin because that's what we'll do so often.
But first, this concept, absolute zero. It's the theoretical temperature at which all particle motion stops completely, and it happens at zero Kelvin, or negative 273 degrees Celsius. Now, how do I get between Celsius and Kelvin? Well, if you look at those scales enough, you'll eventually pull this out. If you take a Celsius degree measurement and you add 273 to it, it gives you what the value would be in Kelvins. Or if I kind of flip this around, I get K equals C plus 273. Now, what if I was given or I have a Kelvin value and I want to figure out Celsius? Well, it's very simple. You just subtract. So flip it around. Uh, Celsius is Kelvin minus 273. So let's try a couple of these. Pause the video now. Um, try these on your own, and then I'll show you the answers in just a second. 585 Kelvins is equal to 312 degrees Celsius. I just simply subtract 273. If I'm given a Kelvin value, subtract 273, and that gives you the Celsius version. Same thing here, 52 Kelvins, subtract away 273, and that should give you negative 221. Now here I'm going in the opposite direction, so I want to do just the opposite. Instead of subtracting, I want to add 273. This is room temperature, by the way. 25 degrees Celsius, 298 Kelvin. That's kind of what it's like in my room right now. And then uh, 145 degrees Celsius, again, add 273. That gives you 418 Kelvins. Now, the one thing I did not mention is that Kelvins do not have a degree symbol. It's just space and then the capital letter K. Um, why is that? Well, degrees can go positive and negative, but Kelvins are absolute. Kelvins are only positive, so there's no need for a degree. Um, that's it. That's temperature. That's what it is, and that's the three most common scales that temperature is measured in. It's important that you know that temperature is really linked to kinetic energy, and kinetic energy is really linked to the speed of the particles. So the faster the particles are moving, the higher its temperature will be. Thank you.